James 3 verse 13 Who is a wise man, and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. The Bible made reference to our manner of conversation. It is very important for us as believers to watch what we say. There are those who try to downplay the power of our words, but to do this, they are downplaying the Word of God. The Bible is very clear. Your words are powerful. You have to give account for your words. Matthew 12, verses 36 to 37. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. In other words, be very careful what you say. Be very careful about the words that come out of your mouth. Be selective with your choice of words. The words of our mouth must be soothing. According to the Bible, Wisdom and understanding are measured by the quality of words we speak and the kind of conversations we engage in. It is not all things that are good for Christians to say. More so, it is particularly bad for a believer to say what is not established in Scripture. We shall consider three of those things which believers need to stop saying. The first thing all Christians need to stop saying is that we are all God's children. Allow me to quote one single verse that proves the statement that we are all children of God is wrong. John 8 verse 44 Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. The number one identity of the devil that we all know is telling lies. Of course, we were told of the mission of the devil on earth in the New Testament in John 10 verse 10. His mission is to kill, steal, and destroy. Have you ever wondered how he, the devil, is going to achieve all of these missions? He has no other way but through lies and deceit. He used this same method on Eve and it worked. The lie that he told in the beginning affected the world. That is to let you know the strength that every lie carries. In John 8 verse 44, Jesus was speaking to some set of people in this verse of the Bible. They claimed to be children of God. They believed one could just bear the title child of God without having the qualities of a child of God. Jesus had to make it clear to them what they are. He called them children of the devil because they were filled with the identity of their father, the devil. Biology tells us about genetics and traits. The genetic formation of the offspring can be from the parent. Some habits are transferred through genetics, and also some characters are through the genes of the parents passed to the parent. This is exactly what Jesus was telling the people. They were liars, and the only one who has this identity is the devil. There are no shortcuts to this. There is no way to sweeten this. What Jesus was saying is clear. If you are a liar, you are of the devil. So many people in this world have turned lies to be a normal thing. Some will go to the extent of bearing false witness against someone. Telling lies has become part of human lives, but Jesus is saying it is not right. This is one of the most wonderful things about the Bible and our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells you how it is and doesn't hold. 
You don't have to be a liar. You gain nothing from it but adoption into the family of the devil. Not everyone is a child of God, and the Bible is clear regarding this fact. We are not all the children of God, because Jesus pointed out that some are the children of the devil. God is the creator of all, but he is not the father of all. God is only the father of those who have accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Such people have been adopted as children into the kingdom of God through the precious blood of Jesus. Christians are only the children of God because they have put their faith in Christ Jesus. Galatians 3 verse 26 So in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. John 1 verses 10 to 13 He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The new birth is fundamental to becoming a child of God. There is no heaven for you if you are not born again. You have to be born again. To see the kingdom of God, to enter the kingdom of God, to have anything to do with God, you must be born all over again. It is a necessity. Jesus said it to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Romans 8 verse 14 says that it is those that are led by the Holy Spirit that are the children of God. It means that those that are led by the devil are the children of the devil. The children of God will do the will of God, while the children of the devil will fulfill the lust of their father, the devil. Romans 8 verses 16 to 17 The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. This is a false doctrine we need to stay clear away from. The second thing Christians need to stop saying is stating things like, so and so is going through this or that because of their lack of faith. Jesus warned us, in judging others, in Matthew 7 verse 1. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. We don't have such liberty to judge people because of the challenges or circumstances they are facing. If God has blessed you or granted you victory in certain areas of your life, it is not a license to judge others as being faithless. There are certain challenges people face that are not tied to whether they have faith or not. Don't be quick to judge people when they are going through hardship and the trials of life. If someone is poor, it does not mean they lack faith in God. If someone is going through a divorce, it does not mean they lack faith in God. If someone is sick and they have prayed and prayed and they are still sick, it does not mean that they lack faith in God. If someone loses a loved one, it does not mean they lack faith in God. All I am saying is that don't be so quick to judge people when they're going through suffering. All I'm saying is that you do not know the reason behind what they're going through. So it is not your place to say that this person is in this situation because of lack of faith. Don't go about saying it because so-and-so does not have faith that he or she is passing through challenges. If all our challenges are based on the problem of faith, then it means that lack of faith made Paul to pass through so much pain for the sake of the gospel. The problems that Joseph faced had nothing to do with faith. Job also faced life's trials 
not because he didn't trust God enough. In fact, his trials came as a result of the relationship he had with God. The friends of Job said a number of things against him. They judged him to be sinful, but they were wrong. That is the same way some Christians go about saying, it is because of lack of faith that so-and-so has lingered on a spot. Such believers might be sincerely wrong. Instead of condemning someone because of presumed lack of faith, it is better you encourage and pray for him or her. God is the perfect judge. Only he knows why we are really passing through some of the challenges that come our way. In fact, there are times that a believer may not even have an idea of why he or she is having certain experiences. Don't pull people down by saying they don't have faith. Rather, encourage them to trust God the more and help them in prayer.